Alright guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, it is finally the winter time, and to celebrate, I am going to be going through some of my favorite winter-themed locations in the Pokemon world. Now, if you've been around for a couple months, you'll probably know that I did a very similar video when we hit fall back in September. Now, this video is coming out the day after the winter solstice, so I am a day late and I do apologize, but... Yeah, we are going to dive right in here and take a look at some of the best snow-filled locations, for the most part, in the Pokemon world. Now we're going to count down from 5 to 1 on this list, and starting at number 5, we are going to go with Snowbell City in the Kalos region. Snowbell City is to the east of the Kalos region, and in it you will find Wolfric and the 8th gym of the Kalos region. This is a gorgeous looking city in the Kalos region, and it's one of the cities that you get to last in the game. You have progressed incredibly far on your journey by the time you hit Snowbell City, and the calming music and the relaxing ambiance of a snow filled town nestled up right against the beginning of what becomes the Pokemon League and Victory Road is an incredible effect on the player character. It leaves a lasting impression. Wolfric himself is also a really cool gym leader. Cool is not meant to be a pun there, but it works. Uh, his design is really good. His gym overall layout I really like, and I just love the place that the Snowbell City Gym is in, in the Kalos region. I love the location in what is meant to be a French-related region and ultimately it is one of the best winter themed towns in all of Pokemon. Coming in at number 4 on this list is a brand new town in the Pokemon world. It is the town of Surchester in the Galar region. Surchester did so much to make me love it, and I want to hit on one of the things that makes it different from other wintry, snowy looking towns in Pokemon. Surchester is very similar to other places like Snowbell City and Snow Point City, given its uh, its ambiance and the way it's designed and the way it's nestled in to a very snowy mountainous area of, a, of any given region. But one of the things that this town really does well is give you some really cool Galar lore that you don't get anywhere else in the game, and it relates to the Pokemon Carcoal. Carcoal, it is said, in ancient times was used to heat the homes of people when they didn't have electric furnaces, stoves, oil, etc., etc. They had a carcoal in their home and it would supply them with heat. It was a naturally heat producing Pokemon. It is pretty much made of coal. It is some form of sentient coal. And since car coal is on wheels in its design, it could follow humans around and warm them wherever they go. There's a couple trainers in Surchester that also have car coal as their companion Pokemon, and you can see them wheeling around with car coal. I love these little human Pokemon interaction pieces to the lore of, of, this fan, of this franchise. It's one of the things that I'm really looking forward to with Legends Arceus. Hopefully, we're going to get more of it. Sir Chester makes this list because of how well the town is designed and because of the really cool lore that Carcoal has in relation to humans and of a snowy environment. People didn't always have the ability to power their homes with heat uh, through technology, so they needed some natural for sources, fires or Pokemon for that matter. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. Now, coming in at number three on this list of best winter locations in the Pokemon world is Route 216 in the Sinnoh region. I adore this route, not only for the music and for the character designs, but also for tons of the ice type Pokemon that you can encounter. One of the coolest features about Route 216 is how you enter into it. You're coming out of Mount Coronet into the middle point of what is essentially a ravine between two different mountainous pieces of Mount Coronet. There's bridges connecting the different edges, there's trainers on every single side, and you can traverse it at your heart's content. There's hidden items to find on every single level, and it just really immerses the player character in a snowy part of a mountainous region. They do an excellent job in this route of making you face the elements as well. You have to face heavier snow, lighter snow, patches of grass where you can walk freely. There's some homes littered about with people who will give you lore about the Sinnoh region, will help you out and heal your Pokemon if you need it, and as I mentioned before, there's there's nothing, absolutely nothing in Pokemon that beats a really good route theme, and Route 216 has it. It is incredible, it is one of the highlights of the Sinnoh region, and if you're a fan of snowy routes in Pokemon, which frankly we need more of, this is one of the highlights. I absolutely adore it. Number two on this list 
is one that some of you might have never visited before. That's right. I'm talking about the Sinjo ruins in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now, if you're a lore junkie like myself for Pokemon, or if you've watched this channel for any number of months, I'm sure at one point or another, you will have heard me or other people that you watch or in your own research have heard about the Sinjo ruins. The Sinjo ruins was a special location that you could unlock in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And the only way you could unlock it is if you had a special event Arceus that you had to transfer in from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum. If you brought this Arceus to the ruins of Alf in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, a, a, an explorer, an excavator, a researcher, whatever he is, would bring you to a special location, the Sinjo Ruins. There, you would meet Cynthia. Cynthia would take you to a little house at the base of the ruins and talk to you about what's going on here. When you entered into the Sinjo Ruins with your Arceus, it would center itself on the table, on the table, on the platform, and it would show you a really cool cinematic and you would be able to create a brand new legendary Pokemon, one of Dialga, Palkia, or Garatina from an egg. It is an incredible uh, special piece of content in Pokemon's history, and the, it's an incredibly well-designed area. It's, it's very small. It's a little bit of a walkway between the house and the ruins, but it's in the snowy region. It's an area between the Sinnoh region and the Johto region. One would assume if you're doing the geography of the Pokemon world, Kanto, Johto, and Sinnoh are connected. Mount Coronet is the mountain range connecting the three. Mount Coronet is what it's called in Sinnoh, but the, the, the range itself is a connected set of mountains that you see in Johto, Sinnoh, and Kanto. I love the geography of it. I love the placement of it between Johto and Sinnoh. I love the lore implications, and I love the feel. We're in the mountains. We're deep in the mountains, in an area that the map can't even point to. You're just kind of north of Johto. I absolutely love it, and that is why it falls to number two on my list. Coming in at number one on my list is a brand new one, one of my favorite locations in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and it comes from the DLC. It is none other than the Crown Tundra, an area to the south of the mainland of Galar. It is connected to the rest of the mainland, but it is an incredibly cold, incredibly desolate region of the Galar region itself. There's only one town here, Freezington. It has a wonderful theme, it has wonderful people. It is the story center of the Crown Tundra. It's where you encounter Calyrex and get to go on your legendary Dynamax raids. It is a wonderful location with so many different varied places to go to, from iced oceans to underground caverns. You could explore uh, cold mountains where Articuno rises. It is an incredible location, a massive ice castle with a tree growing in the center where you eventually find Calyrex. The Crown Tundra has it all, has legendaries, has really good music, has really good lore, has really good story content, and has really good multiplayer features. It is an incredible DLC expansion, and it's probably my favorite location in all of Galar, and it's what made Sword and Shield, for me, completely worth it. I've said this before in my DLC reviews for Sword and Shield, which I've done on the channel. If Sword and Shield had the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra part of their base game, <laughs> I would have almost no complaints about Sword and Shield besides, you know, some of the obvious ones like the Dex Cut. I absolutely adore the Crown Tundra. I love the ambiance that it has for the winter season. I absolutely love everything that it added gameplay-wise for Sword and Shield. And for all of those reasons, it is number one on my list. I certainly hope you are all having a wonderful holiday season. I hope if you are someone who celebrates Christmas, you are getting excited because it's coming in a couple days. If you celebrate another holiday or if you're just spending some time with your family and your friends and your loved ones, I hope you're also having a really good month. We're coming down to the end of the year and we're gonna have a bunch of really cool content to celebrate that, to celebrate all of you guys just showing this channel immense support over the last year. I couldn't thank you guys enough. Hope you enjoyed this list. Hope you enjoyed this next edition of my seasonal rankings. Uh, we're going to do these until we run out of seasons, until we get through, you know, the four big ones. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and let me know down in the comments section. Do you agree with my list or are there any changes or additions you would make to your own list? Do you want to even mention some more? Give me a top 10 if you want to. I hope you all enjoyed the video, as I mentioned before. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one, which might be coming on Christmas Eve. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Peace out.